Hey everyone, this is Sophia Schur of TMU at Infobox, and I'm going to briefly show you how to demonstrate the curator integration with both NIO syslogs and Box1 data coming in from the CSP via the Box1 cloud data connector. First, I'm going to show you the CDC integration, and then I'm going to show you the NIOS integration. For the CDC, we're going to add some data and explore it both within the CSP and curator. We're going to perform a search with it, and then we're going to use that search in the dashboard item to visualize it. For the NIOS integration, we're also going to add and explore some data, and we're going to perform a quick filter on it to demonstrate some simple payload searching. So this here, what you're looking at, is the IBM Curator SEM. When you first log in, you'll see a dashboard created specifically for the CDC integration. You can see there's already a couple charts in here, but not a whole lot of data, so let's add some. And we're going to watch this data be ingested into Curator in real time. So let's set that up now. I'm going to head to Log Activity. I'm going to hit View, Real Time. So now let's minimize this screen. And on the desktop is a little script called Generate Logs that performs a bunch of NS lookups on some known malicious queries. When we run this script, these queries are going to show up in Curator. So you can just right click, run with PowerShell and let it do its thing. Let's head back to QRadar, and you can see all the logs being ingested in real time. Um, if you want, you can also show how to view this identical data as it looks in the CSP. So if we go to the CSP here and log in, you're going to want to go to Reports, Security Activity. Here are all the hits. Uh, these are all the queries generated by the script we just ran. This is the data that is being sent to Curator via the CDC. Um, keep in mind that this data in the CSP here might take a minute or two to show up. So let's head back to Curator. If you select a non-streaming view, let's say the last hour, that allows you to sort the columns as you wish, um, search through them. Um, all the columns are nice and indexed and um, set up for searching. If you go to Quick Searches at the top, you can see a uh, bunch of pre-built searches here that you, you can explore as you please. Um, you can go to top domains, for example. So now the data is organized by the domains queried the most. So let's create a brand new search now and use that search to create a dashboard item. Um, to get the search ready, I'm just going to go to the default search. You can just click log activity and it'll bring you back. And I'm going to pick the streaming view to prevent overriding the existing search. Let's add a search that will group our data by category filters. Let's go to Search, Edit Search. Uh, you can choose to include it in your quick searches if you wish. Uh, make sure to set the time range to the last hour. And we're going to remove the feed from our list of columns, and we're going to use it in our group by area here. So we're going to group by feeds. Um, you can get rid of any other columns in here you don't really care about, like the magnitude or the source port. And now we're going to add the parameter that will display only category filters in the feed. So set the parameter to the feed. Um, set the operator to containing any of, and the value will be cat. Click the plus button here and add filter. should look like that. And click search. So now you see. They are all nicely grouped by their category filter feed and organized by their count. So how many times this category filter was hit. Uh, you can also interact with the data here. So if I click on malicious sites, for example, it will bring up a new window showing me all the events that contain the malicious sites feed. Um, when you open a new window like this, uh, you can see that it displays it, the columns aren't the same as you see down here. Um, so we can edit that in, the, in a search real quick. So if we click search, edit search, if we scroll down and set the display to Infobox CDC columns and click search, this data is much easier to recognize um, that all these events are part of that malicious site speed that we just clicked on. Close the window when you're finished. So now we need to save the search criteria in order to add it to a dashboard. So go, go ahead and click uh, Save Criteria at the top here. And name it something distinct, like um, Infoblox CDC Threat Defense um, Top Cat Filters. Make sure it's in the Infoblox group. 
um, set it to the recent hour and make sure to, to check this include in my dashboard box here and then click okay. And okay, great. So let's go to dashboard now. Uh, you can see the data has been updated with the um, data we input using the script. And let's add the search that we just created as a dashboard item. So if we go to add item, log activity, event searches, and scroll down to it, uh, top cat filters. And we can move it to the middle here just to make it bigger. You can drag and drop these. Um, click on the yellow settings icon. Uh, click or check the capture time series data box and click save. Uh, it'll bring up have a pop up. Just click OK. And if you refresh the page, they're there. You can also click uh, view in log activity in any of these uh, to view the search um, back in its original form in log activity. So if I click on that, reload, and there they are again. So that's it for the basics of the CDEC integration. I'm going to move on to the NIOS one now. I'm going to go to quick searches and a search called Infoblox NIOS all syslogs has been pre-configured for this integration. You can see I was doing some other testing in here. So set the view to real time streaming so we can view these events coming in in real time. And I'm going to go to NIOS and log in. Back to QRadar, and you can see my login has already been logged. So these logs get into QRadar pretty quickly. So let's add a simple host in uh, NIOS just to, to get some more logs in here and do some searching with it. So if we go back to NIOS, uh, data management, IPAM, and click this network here, and click on any IP that isn't already used. I'm going to click on this one, 111. Um, click on add host. Um, click select zone, name it something like test host and hit save and close. Keep everything else the same. And I'm going to go to admin, logs, and syslogs. And these are the logs um, that were just created, these five logs here when we created that host. And I'm going to show you that these logs are identical in QRadar. If we go to QRadar, there they are, these five logs. So to look at these closer, um, we can set the view to the last five minutes or something like that. And you can see all the logs that we just created right here. Um, let's search for all the log entries for which that payload contains the new host IP we just created. Go ahead and click add filter. Uh, choose payload contains. Uh, keep the operator as is and then enter the IP. Add filter. So now you can see um, all the logs uh, that contain uh, that string that we entered, that 192, 168, 111. So that's how you give a pretty basic demo of the QRadar integration with Infoblox. Um, there's lots of other QRadar features here um, that's, that weren't touched upon in this video that this data could provide the backbone for um, if a customer would be interested in something like that. Um, I hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching.